lovely friends, it's Margaret, and we are going to talk about the end of the year. Yep, it's, it's, it's December. How did that happen, guys? I don't even know. Since it is December, I guess now is a great time to do the end of the year book tag. I understand, this is a little bit late. I am like the last person in the world to do this tag. Maybe not in the world, but maybe like the United States and Canada, the last person to do this tag. However, I was kindly tagged by Allie with Books. I liked the questions and I thought, hmm, why not do this? I have other tags I need to do, I know. Where were we? Linking Allie's video in the description box and I will link the original creator, Ariel Bissette, down in the description box. If you don't watch Ariel's channel, she is lovely. She is wonderful. Uh, Allie is one of my favorite people to watch on booktube. She just... I'm so glad she tagged me and she makes my days so happy when she posts videos. But we're not here for me to talk about how much I love other booktubers. We're here for me to talk about how badly my reading life is going. We're also going to try and not talk like a Gilmore girl in this video. Like maybe talk at a normal speed. <sighs> This is gonna be tough, guys. Okay, so I have my phone with the questions. I have my abandoned reading journal. However, it does have some information in it that will be useful to me later on in this tag. Um, yes, I. if you're wondering where I'm throwing things in my videos, my bed is like right there. I just hit it. Um, so that is where I am throwing things and now it's off kilter, hold on. Everything's fine. So technically, I still have time to accomplish most of these goals. Some of these I will probably have read by the time this video goes up, but I'm going to mention them anyways because I am obsessed. So the first question on this tag are, are there any books that you started this year that you need to finish? Let me grab my computer. See, this is why I love Goodreads because it shames me with every book I have ever put down. So I'm really bad at like starting books and then putting them down. Like I'm not Jessie the Reader bad. No offense, Jessie. I don't have like hordes of unread books following behind me and haunting my every step. Um, but I do have a few books that like I put down and I've been meaning to get back to. Couple of these, we are going to need to restart. One of them I'm currently reading, so we're not gonna worry about that. But let's see, books I need to finish by the end of the year. I need to finish Jane Eyre. I started that, uh, gave it five stars the first time I read it. Well, I can already tell you that this is a three star book. Anyways, uh, while I do need to finish Jane Eyre because I started it and I would like to finish it, I do not like this book as much as I liked the movie. I also need to actually finish Save the Cat Writes a Novel. I've started it twice this year and then we're like, okay, I got what I needed out of it, but I'd like to actually read the entire book because I'm sure there is quite a bit of wisdom in the entire book. I need to actually probably just restart Side at this point um, because all of the books are out now so I can finish the series and not suffer. And then I need to finish, aha, I have this. The two that are on here that I actually have, I need to finish Obsidio. I started this in January, put it down because Blackathon was going on and neither Amy Kaufman nor Jay Kristoff are black. And then I was in the middle of the Bane Chronicles somewhere, I don't know where I am in this. I'm reading the Shadowhunters stories chronologically, like except for Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy because that is confusing. <sighs> because like some of the chronology, like, okay, I'm not gonna get into that, but it's confusing because there are two different timelines in that story and it gets confusing. So I need to actually continue on with this. I believe there are quite a few more stories that I need to read from here and then I need to like continue on rereading all of the Shadowhunters books. I was supposed to be done all of them by the end of the year and then it didn't happen. So the second question is, do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? The Scorpio Race is by Maggie Stiefvater. It is November. This book takes place in November. So I'm going to read it for the third time because this is such a good book. If you want a book that will give you all the feelings and make even the hardest hearted, cold, hard, stone hearted bitch cry, it's this book. I mean, I didn't actually cry at the end, but there were tears in my eyes. I was at work, like you couldn't actually indulge in a good cry, but like there were tears in my eyes. This is one of the happiest, teariest endings I have ever experienced in my life. It got me. I have never actually physically read it. I have listened to it both times. One time I listened to it at work and one time I forced my brother to listen to it. It didn't quite get to him the way it got to me, but there are horses involved. Um, so if you haven't heard me rave about the Scorpio races, I have a favorites video coming out at some point and I'm sure it will be on there and I will do plenty of raving at that point in my life. Just know that I think it is Maggie Stiefvater's best work. And yes, the horses might be biasing my opinion, but I think it is her best work and I love it and also 
Look at this. She drew me a horse. I mean, I bought it because she said she was going to be drawing horses, but like. The next question is, is there a new release you're still waiting for, for this year? Uh, uh, yes. As of recording, in two days, I will be able to get my little rubby paws on Queen of Nothing. And I will be complete as a booktuber. Because, oh my goodness, this... <sighs> so many feelings about that series. I'm not ready for it to be over, and yet I am completely ready for it to be over. I just... I also want, what is it, Starsight by Brandon Sanderson? Whatever the second book in the Skyward trilogy, tri duology is, I want that book. I am still waiting on that book. That one I don't think releases until December. So, like, there's that one as well. I am not quite as invested in that one because um, there wasn't as much romance in the first book. I mean, granted, can you really call what happens in The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King a romance? But it is, like, angsty and lots of unresolved sexual tension. Like... It's good stuff. Uh, there's there's a little bit of a slow burn, I feel, in Skyward, possibly, but there's also, like, so little of it that maybe there isn't, and so I don't know how I'm gonna feel about the end of that series. I also need to get my hands on Supernova because I haven't yet, because I told myself I was not going to purchase this book until I caught up on word count in NaNoWriMo. Uh, if it has not happened yet, I might just get it when I go to get Queen of Nothing. Or I might not get it when I go to get Queen of Nothing. Who knows how this is going to work? Do I look like I have my reading life together? No. Pfft. My real life ain't even together. Pfft. You think I got I know what I'm doing with books? I actually probably am more together there than I am in my real life. But we're not gonna talk about that. I think we're at question number four. There are not numbers on these questions, but question number four is what are three books you want to read before the end of the year? Okay, hold on. Uh, I'm not going to say Queen of Nothing, and I'm not going to say Supernova because I've already talked about those, and those are givens, so I'm going to go find some other books. I have books here, and strangely enough, two of them are sci-fi, which is interesting considering the fact that my sci-fi shelf is sad. Anyways, so besides what we have already discussed, uh, obviously Queen of Nothing is on there, obviously Supernova is on there, obviously Starsight or whatever it's called is on there, the other books that I absolutely have to read by the end of the year, I need to read The Stars We Steal by Alexa Dunn. I have been a fan of Alexa's channel for forever, and I have been listening to her talk about this book and how she's working on this book. It is The Bachelor meets, sorry, it's Jane Austen meets The Bachelor in space. I just, like, this is my most anticipated release of 2020. And I got an arc of it. So I need to read this because I got an arc of it. And if I have an arc, I need to have read this before the book came out, especially considering that, like, I was so excited and I just haven't gotten to it yet. The other book that was the sci-fi is The Hundred Rebellion. This is the fourth Hundred book. I love this series. I love the TV show. Don't know if I'm going to continue to love the TV show depending on how season seven goes. So much frustration in this television show because it is in the hands of a sadist. Like, he just, either he is just giving me the best slow burn of my life or he is giving me the biggest disappointment ever since I finished that one trilogy that I'm not gonna name because I don't bash books on this TV show. Anyways, so I'm excited that I got my hands on this because I am always here for more Bellamy and Clark. I also, uh, less exciting is the fact that Finn is still on the covers of a book he doesn't even exist in. Like, he doesn't even exist in the series. He's only on the TV show. So why is, why is he there? Like, the only three people, only three of the people on this cover actually exist. Okay, lighting change because the sun is going down and technology is what it is. Okay, and then the last book that I need to read because I would like to get it to my friend in time for her to read it and actually pass it on before the book comes out, and that is The Silvered Serpents by Roshni Chakshi. I am one of the few booktubers out there that actually enjoyed The Gilded Wolves, um, and so I got myself an arc because I did. Uh, and I need to read it. I, I do, and then... Kira will stop yelling at me because I'm not reading it. I've lost my phone, so now I don't know what questions there are. So, oh, there it is. I found it. I found it. There are books on it. Honorable mention, I actually would like to get Frankly in Love by David Yoon read as well because my contemporary shelf is looking kind of sad right now. I have a separate TBR shelf and then I have my regular shelves, and so my contemporary shelf is looking a little bit sad, and I'm excited for this book, and also I need more contemporaries on that shelf because there's only like eight books on there, so that needs to be fixed. Uh, and this cannot graduate to that shelf until I have read it. You asked for three books, I gave you four. Deal with it. Um, anyways, so, oh, oh, I forgot.
forgot about the diviners. I also want to read the diviners this year and whatever the second book is in the diviners. I have it on audiobook though, so I'm about to start. So really, does it count for this tag? Question number five is, is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? Well, I won't be all that shocked if Queen of Nothing becomes my favorite book of the year. It probably isn't actually. Like I'd have to actually look at my list and see. Sorry, I got distracted by thinking of all of the books I've read this year, uh, which I cannot keep them. They don't, they don't fit in my brain. Anyways, so uh, I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think, speaking of the diviners, I think the diviners might have a good chance at that, possibly. Um, I think The Stars We Steal has a chance if I read it before the end of the year, <laughs> um, which I plan on doing it. But I think, like, yeah, Supernova, maybe, it's going to depend, a lot is going to depend, because Supernova might end up being my favorite book of the year, but also Queen of Nothing might end up being my favorite book of the year. You know what I mean? It's complicated. So, final question is, have you already started making plans for 2020? Do I look like the kind of person that starts planning my reading out? Guys, I don't even know what's on my TBR until like the day before I film it. <laughs> um, the only thing that I plan reading wise 2020 is I'm going to be doing the next round of Vaultathon. I haven't decided whether that's going to be January or March. I'm still on the fence about that. I know what movie it's going to be. I don't know what book it's going to be though. Um, because I haven't found one that I like that seems to fit the theme that I kind of, or the themes that I've been playing with. Actually, by the time you see this, I will have announced what the movie is for round three of Baltathon, which is Atlantis, The Lost Empire, the most underrated Disney movie to ever be an underrated Disney movie. Um, I'm still mad about it, still. Uh, so if you have a book that you think would go well with Atlantis, The Lost Empire, and it's not a terribly long one, because remember, we only have a week to read this, let me know in the comments. I would appreciate it. Um, however, yeah, that's it. The only things I have, the only plans I have are like, I know I'm doing Baltathon, and I'm gonna actually try and keep up with my reading journal next year, now that I actually know what I want it to be. So that, that is, that is it. That's the tag. I am done. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Also, if you are new to the channel and you want more videos about books and writing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That is it for now, my friends. Happy reading, and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye!